Today we're going to be reviewing the RX 7900 XT in four different ultrawide and super ultrawide resolutions. I'm Scott and you're watching Ultrawide Tech. The specific model we're looking at today has a game clock of 2.1 gigahertz and a boost clock of 2.45 gigahertz. Now, personally, I've seen this thing run much higher on the boost than that. Uh, for example, in Forza Horizon 5, it was running at nearly constantly above 2.9 gigahertz. So, and even in games that are much heavier like uh, Cyberpunk, I've seen it running well over its 2.4 gigahertz uh, rated boost. So, uh, expect this thing to do do better than that uh, as long as you have good cooling in your case. As for the memory, it has 20 gigabytes of memory uh, with a 320 bit bus and it has GDR6 20 gigabit per second modules inside. The specific version of the AMD Radeon RX 7900 XT that we will be testing today is the Sapphire Pulse Edition. The overall build quality of the card is quite solid. It has a full metal backplate, and though it has a plastic shroud, it is quite stiff and doesn't bend anywhere when you're gripping the card. The size of the card is quite tidy for this generation. It's only marginally larger than a 2080 that I have. The I.O. on the card is two display ports and two HDMI ports. This differs from the reference design that has two display ports, one USB-C and one HDMI. Personally, I like that extra USB-C because it allows me to have a one cable solution for VR or it allows me to have a one cable solution for a monitor. Looking at the top, we can see two traditional 8-pin power connectors, so you'll have no compatibility issues with your power supplies and no worries. Today, we'll be testing in four different resolutions. 4K ultrawide, 1440p super ultrawide, 1600p ultrawide and 1440p ultrawide. Let's take a look at our test system and then let's see what this card can do. We will be testing the AMD Radeon RX 7900 XT at stock settings on our AMD R7 5800X3D test system running G-Skill Trident Z DDR4-3200 at low latencies and running the latest Adrenaline Edition drivers 22.12.2. Let's get into the benchmarks. First up, we have Assassin's Creed Valhalla played at the ultra high preset. Here we can see that even at 4K ultra wide, we're getting a smooth 64 FPS, which when considering that that's even 25% higher than standard 4K, quite impressive for the baby card of this latest generation. Moving down to 1440p super ultra wide, we see a 27% improvement, bringing us up to 82 FPS, which is a very smooth experience. And moving to 1600p ultra wide, we get another 17% boost in performance, bringing us into high refresh rate territory with a 96 FPS average. And finally, we have our most popular 1440p ultra wide resolution, which gets another 14% performance improvement, bringing it all the way up to 109 FPS, which is a very smooth and very enjoyable gameplay experience, and pushing the limits of what a lot of the early ultra wides at this resolution can do. The next game we're benchmarking is Borderlands 3 at the badass preset. 4K Ultra, we see that we're just shy of 60 FPS, hitting only 55 FPS, leaving us in just acceptable gameplay territory. At 1440p Super Ultra Wide resolutions, we're seeing a better than scaling 36% increase in performance, bringing us up to 75 FPS, providing a very smooth gaming experience. The 1600p Ultra Wide resolution is knocking on the door of high refresh rate with an 89 FPS average, an 18% improvement over Super Ultra Wide. And at 1440p Ultra Wide, we find ourselves once again in the 100 FPS range, with a 17% improvement landing us at 104 FPS. Next up we have Cyberpunk 2077 at its ultra preset with FSR off. At 4K ultra wide once again we are only in acceptable gameplay territory with a 49 FPS average. At 1440p super ultra wide we see a 31% increase in performance edging us over the line to smooth gameplay territory with a 64 FPS average. 1600p being 17% more performance, but still stays in the smooth gameplay territory with 75 FPS. Even Ultrawide 1440p can't get us out of the smooth gameplay territory, falling just shy of high refresh rate at 89 FPS, which is a 19% increase in performance. 
Following Cyberpunk, we have Forza Horizon 5 at the Extreme preset. At our 4K ultrawide resolution, we see a very smooth 71 FPS, our highest FPS yet for this resolution. Though, as we go on, you will see that this game has the worst scaling of any of the games in our benchmark suite. Moving to 1440p Super Ultrawide, we see a mere 13% scaling, less than half of what we would expect in this change in resolution, providing only 80 FPS. Again, at 1600p Ultrawide, we see only 9% improvement, keeping us stuck in the smooth gameplay territory, even at this resolution. And finally, at our 1440p Ultrawide resolution, we see a dismal 5% increase in performance, barely squeaking us over the line into high refresh rate territory for the 91 FPS average. We do see more than margin of error scaling in this game, so it doesn't seem to be a CPU bottleneck, but there's something else in the game engine limiting performance at the lower resolutions. Here we have the very clean looking Hitman 3 running at ultra settings. Our 4K ultra results bring in a very smooth 82 FPS. When moving to 1440p super ultra ride, we see a very nice jump in performance by 38%, bringing us all the way to 114 FPS. And in our 1600p resolution, we get another 14% performance increase, bringing us all the way to 130 FPS, passing the very high refresh rate threshold. Our 1440p ultrawide resolution only increases 9%, bringing us to 141 FPS. Up next, we have our second Horizon named game in this benchmark suite, with Horizon Zero Dawn being played at its ultimate quality preset. Here we see our 4K Ultrawide coming in at a smooth 66 FPS, delivering very enjoyable gameplay for this type of RPG. Moving to our 1440p Super Ultrawide resolution, we see a tremendous 62% increase in performance, bringing us up to 107 FPS for a very nice high refresh rate experience. Though when we move to 1600p Ultrawide, we see a regression in performance by 5%, giving us only 102 FPS. I double checked these results and ran both of them again just to confirm that that was really what was happening, and it was. My guess as to why this is, is that crowd density in this game tends to be focused in the center of the screen. So when walking through the city, you go through a lot of narrow hallways, meaning that the extra resolution of the super ultrawide is just rendering more wall and not the crowd itself, artificially boosting its FPS. Finally, at 1440p ultrawide, we see a 14% improvement, bringing us up to 116 FPS. Despite some wonkiness in the resolution scaling, the overall experience this 7900 XT is providing in this game is very good. Up next is the very fun and funny Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy, being played at its ultra preset. At our 4K ultra resolution, we are nearing the high refresh rate threshold with a game performance of 84 FPS. At 1440p Super Ultra, we're getting 29% more performance, bringing us into a very nice 108 FPS for this game. At our 1600p Ultra resolution, we crossed the threshold for very high refresh rate for the first time, delivering 127 FPS, which is an 18% improvement over 1440p Super Ultra. -wide. And at the ever popular 1440p ultra wide, we get another 13% improvement, bringing us up to 143 FPS. The performance of the 7900 XT in this game is very good, and users of both 1600p and 1440p ultra wides will have to have the latest models in order to see this kind of FPS on their screen. The next game we're benchmarking is the Venerable Shadows of the Tomb Raider at its highest preset. At 4K Ultrawide, we're getting a very nice and smooth 80 FPS. Moving to Super Ultrawide 1440p, we get a very nice 41% increase in performance, delivering 113 FPS. Moving to 1600p, we get an additional 17% performance, bringing us into very high refresh rate territory at 132 FPS. And our 1440p results continue to scale 16%, bringing us all the way to 153 FPS. Next game on our list is representing our eSports titles. We have Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Seed running at Ultra Preset. Using the DX12 API, the Vulkan API does run faster, but has a bug in it that prevents it from being suitable for benchmarking. Here you can see even the 4K ultrawide resolution is running at extremely high frame rates, hitting 241 FPS. Moving down to 1440p Super Ultra, we see an impressive 40% gain in performance, boosting us all the way up to 339 FPS. The 1600p Ultra gets another 15% increase in performance, taking us all the way to 390. And the 1440p Ultra results continue to scale, another 17%, bringing us all the way to 455 FPS. Currently, there are no Ultra monitors that can even hope to keep up with these refresh rates. 
And the final game in our suite is Total War Warhammer 3, running at ultra presets and using the battle simulation. In the 4K Ultraid results, we come crashing back down to barely acceptable FPS for a game of this type, hitting only 45 FPS. Our Super Ultraid 1440p resolution sees some nice scaling of 37%, bringing us back into smooth gameplay territory. 1600p Ultraid resolution sees another 15% scaling, bringing us up to 71 FPS. And our 1440p Ultraid results see some nice scaling of 18%, bringing us to 84 FPS, yet still falling short of the high refresh rate gaming threshold. Now it's time to see how the RX 7900 XT did. Taking a look at our 10 game average, it's hard not to be a bit impressed by what the weakest card in our current generation to date can do. Even at 4K ultra-wide resolution, we're nearing high refresh rate performance, and everything below that is either hitting high refresh rate performance or even very high refresh rate performance metrics. Even if we take out our esports title, our 4K ultra-wide is still providing us very smooth gameplay at 70 FPS, and our super ultra-wide is in high refresh rate territory still at 95 FPS. Our 1600p refresh rate does drop out of very high refresh rate into just high refresh rate but our 1440p results stay in very high refresh rate. If we look at our resolution scaling performance, we see that our Super Ultrawide 1440p is beating out both our 1600p and 1440p Ultrawide in relative scaling performance. We see this scaling beating performance across most games. This is likely due to the Super Ultrawide's aspect ratio having less complex geometry towards the further ends of the screen, giving it better performance than just doing a standard scale down one to one. So, what kind of Ultrawide gamer should be getting an aim AMD Radeon RX 7900 XT. Well, that all depends on the performance metrics you're looking for. Do you just need smooth gameplay for your casual games, or do you want high or even very high refresh rates for more competitive gameplay? If you just want smooth raster gameplay, then any of the ultra-wide resolutions tested would be happy with this card, which is incredible to say considering how hard a 4K ultra-wide monitor is to drive. And if you still find yourself wanting more performance in one of the harder to run games, then 8 out of the 10 games tested have some kind of advanced resolution scaling available to the RX 7900 XT, be it FSR or XESS. If you need high refresh rate gameplay, then this card works for all resolutions but the 4K ultrawide. And if you need very high refresh rates above 120 FPS, then you will need to be a 1440p ultrawide gamer. Now with all that said, just because this meets the performance threshold doesn't mean it's a great buy for you. There could be better value products out there. The obvious one is its big brother, the XTX, which for a bit more money buys you a bit better value. Though I have a sneaking suspicion when we see all the third party vendors card come out and become available to actually purchase and not constantly sold out, you will see the 7900 XT stay close to MSRP and the 7900 XTX creep up to be a little bit closer to the 4080's pricing, assuming that Nvidia doesn't do any kind of price cuts on the 4080, being in the price to performance gap more in favor of the XT card. Than it currently is. I hope this video helped you figure out whether the RX 7900 XT was the right card for you. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please like and subscribe for even more Altroid content. If you have ideas for what we should be working on next, please leave them in the comments below. There are links in the description for all the products that we featured in this video. Thank you so much and goodbye and have a great day.